I'm going to talk about a coffee factory that we built in Derbyshire. Um, and I do apologise because the adjustment in the programme was due to me not being able to get through Brussels last night and only arriving this morning, so uh, Sabina moment. Um, so uh, I uh, came to the UK in 2012 uh, with the mission to build a new freeze-dried coffee factory. Um, it was to replace one which was existing and uh, it eventually closed down in, in London, but uh, I'll just introduce Nestle first. Nestle is um, the largest food company in the world, sales of 90 billion Swiss francs. We spend about 4 billion Swiss francs per year on capital investment. Uh, about 330,000 uh, employees around the world, 440 uh, factories in about 85 countries. We manufacture more than 10,000 different products uh, every day, about 1 billion people purchase our products. Our mission of a good food, good life is to provide our consumers with the best tasting, most nutritious choices possible across a wide range of categories and eating occasions from morning until night. And we believe that to succeed as a business in the long term and create value for our shareholders, we must also create value for society and the communities we operate in. And we call this creating shared value. If you want to look up creating shared value in the context of Nestle, it is all over the uh, internet. In terms of uh, recognition, we have brands which are familiar all over the world. Um, some of the very early brands in Nestle were Nestle itself. The early products were sweetened condensed milk, Maggie um, seasonings, is, uh, mainly in Switzerland and Germany, started over 100 years ago. And uh, we've extended into waters. And um, there are many other there, uh, confectionery and uh, baby food, uh, milk brands, pet food, um, a wide range of products. Our project is with coffee. Uh, coffee in Nestle, uh, soluble coffee in Nestle developed in about the 1930s. So it was a result of uh, Brazil having a large um, supply of coffee. Um, beans, which they couldn't uh, do anything with, they were rotting in the field, and they, they asked Nestle for help to do something with the coffee beans. And over a period of about 10 years, uh, it took to develop soluble coffee, so a long term investment. Uh, the Tutbury factory already produces the products along the bottom the Z um, Azira, Nescafe Original, uh, Dolce Gusto. And the new factory builds uh, the Nescafe Gold Blend. This is free stride coffee. So, what is the process? Uh, coffee is uh, made from 100% coffee. There's no ingredients, there's no mixing, other than mixing different types of beans. It is just coffee. Uh, unfortunately, coffee beans are not that tasty in their own right. And even if you roast them, it leaves you a bit of a, a taste in your mouth. So, we have to clean them. We blend because, you, because they're an agricultural commodity. They can come from almost any country in the tropical world. So you blend them. There's mixtures of Arabica and Robusta beans. Then roasting, grinding, extraction with water, evaporation to remove the water again, and then the drying to produce the, the dried soluble coffee uh, prior to filling and packing. So it's quite a... A complex process for a single ingredient uh, compared to many of the other food products. To do that, we use uh, electricity, water, steam, compressed air, refrigeration, all the utilities, and uh, of course, to build a factory, we have to define all of these elements and design them, size them, procure them, all the uh, standard uh, project processes. Uh, so start off with bean cleaning. Uh, bean cleaning is basically just to clean uh, the beans, remove the stones, the wood, the insects, um, some of the husk is removed. Um, so because it's an agricultural commodity, the first thing you have to do is make it uh, suitable to go for processing. Uh, in Tutbury, the coffee arrives in, um, in bulk uh, trailers, uh, it's delivered to Liverpool. But I mean, you will have seen coffee on television and farms all over the world, it's in large bags uh, typically in, in much of the world. <coughs> Following the cleaning, we go into roasting. Uh, roasters uh, and uh, the silos all are in a dedicated building in this case. Uh, you're still slightly agricultural. The roasters is a 
It's a batch process within the roaster, so about 400, 450 kilograms per batch. So you, you, you have a preheating step, then the heating step, then the cooling and quenching. So you have to control the roasting because this is really where the, 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 the flavour in the coffee is developed. And you can manage the flavour of the coffee by managing your roasting conditions. Um, then the grinding. So before we can extract the, the coffee out of the coffee bean, we're going to have to grind the bean. Um, so there's various technologies. Historically, grinding of coffee beans has taken place uh, with many, many machines over hundreds of years. Uh, so very ancient machines to the more modern machines on the bottom right, which tend to be uh, roller, driver, roller um, grinders. And then also measuring the quality of your grinding with uh, sieve tests, so intervention, quality control measures in place to make sure that the coffee is grown to the right uh, particle size. The next step is uh, the extraction. Extraction, in the simplest terms, is pushing water through the coffee to extract all the soluble parts and you will be left behind with the non-soluble parts. Uh, this you can do at home in a percolator, uh, it's not tremendously efficient. Uh, you will need far more coffee to produce a cup of coffee in a percolator than we would industrially. So uh, a more uh, familiar process at home might also be something like a Dolce Gusto machine or an espresso machine. I'm not advertising too much, I hope. The, um, these processes, the, a small amount of ground coffee, roasting ground coffee, is already in the capsules and the Nespresso and Dolce, uh, Dolce Gusto machines are using high pressure hot water to extract so you, use, you have a much better extraction rate. Industrially we are doing this far bigger with much more efficiency than we are with a small machine but you are trying to extract the maximum amount of soluble coffee from the beans and in terms of total solids extraction you're targeting about 50% from the green, from the, the roasting uh, bean. You have too much water now because you've used a lot of water to extract the coffee, so you now have a, a soluble solution, but it's about 12% solids, 11, 12% solids. Now we have to get rid of all the water again. So the first step in getting rid of the water is evaporation. Uh, be familiar to anybody who has evaporated milk. We use uh, falling film evaporators. Um, there are still one or two climbing film, eva film, film evaporators on the go, and I, I've no doubt you can find somebody who's even got a boiling pan, but uh, the modern machines are all falling film, and uh, I would even go as far as say we're using mechanical vapour uh, recompression now rather than thermal. Uh, so the idea is to boil off all the water, uh, it's done at low pressure to use less energy and a lower evaporation temperature. This gives you a better quality in the product because you're not overheating it too much. And we will be targeting now about 50% uh, total solids. So we're going from 12% to 50% total solids. And with that you have a very viscous uh, syrupy liquid which we're going to dry. Um, and in the case of a freeze-dried uh, coffee factory, of course, we're going to freeze-dry it. Um, so freeze-drying was a process that was really developed by the Americans after the Second World War. They had this technology, they didn't know what to do with it, so they were trying to find ways to use freeze-drying because they'd invented the process. Very energy-intensive process. So over the years, it's always been uh, relatively expensive. Things have improved. Um, so instead of having these batch chambers that you find in the top picture here, um, this is a continuous chamber on the bottom. This is one actually in the factory. And you can just about see a guy at the back to give you an idea of the scale. Uh, these are big beasts. Um, and rather expensive, has to be said as well. So you will put the, the coffee granules frozen. Uh, so we're going to freeze in the coffee. Into, chop it up into granules and put it in the dryer and suck the water out by sublimation. So, um, for the engineers in the room, this is uh, lyophilization. Uh, so, the art of extracting uh, ice from the coffee and turning it into a gas and then condensing the, the water vapor out and leaving behind the frozen coffee granules uh, with 
no, mo no moisture inside them. Um, because you're extracting the water, you've got to create a vacuum, use condensation by, uh, so we're using CO2 condensers to freeze the, uh, um, the vapour coming out of the coffee, and these coils we have to defrost them regularly. So we have multiple coils and there'll be always one in defrost in the process. And then the final step is uh, packing. So most of the coffee we produce goes into glass jars. Some goes into cans, some goes into other soft pack formats. But by and large, uh, in the UK, most of the coffee is purchased in glass jars. It's important that the, the packaging is airtight. So you will be familiar with taking the, the sealed uh, foil off the top of the glass. Uh, because you're trying to maintain the aroma for as long as possible and to avoid the uh, moisture ingress into the jar. So it's an aluminium sealed foil and uh, the longer you can keep the coffee sealed, the better for the quality of the coffee. As soon as you move the lid, of course, volatiles are starting to escape. So try not to keep your coffee sitting open in the cupboard for too long. Um, now, in terms of uh, energy and waste, small comment, we have obviously removed the soluble coffee from the coffee beans, but we're remaining now with all the husk of the coffee beans, um, makes up about 50% of the dry matter, and uh, we use that then to, burn the, to create steam. So we have a special boiler, which is the, the small one on the, on the picture at the top, and then being lifted into the, into the boiler house. Um, so we can burn the coffee grounds, it's not the easiest product to burn, um, but we can burn that to create the steam and it makes up most of the steam consumption that we need for the production. Um, so you, there's a, probably a difficult to see picture unless you know what the boiler looks like on the right hand side. Also, we use a lot of refrigeration, it's a freeze drying process after all. Um, we use natural refrigeration um, gases, so ammonia and CO2. Um, so all the ammonia is contained in one compressor room with the evaporative condensers on the roof above, and distributed around the process is the CO2. So it's a closed loop cascade refrigeration plant. Uh, in the bottom picture on the left, you have the ammonia compressors, you have the cascade heat exchangers in the middle picture, and you have the CO2 compressors on the, on the right-hand side there. And you can see that the refrigeration plant is reasonably meaty, and we've done a lot to do a lot of energy saving in this plant compared to predecessors, so it's actually smaller than the previous factory that was built a few years ago in, uh, in another country. So in this plant we have uh, invested a lot in all the latest technologies uh, for, um, for energy saving. Uh, we have installation of energy metering monitoring throughout, maximise the control, optimisation of the process, LED, li LED lighting throughout the project to bring long term energy savings, um, quite a lot of innovative technology to reduce the refrigeration load in the freeze drying plant. So we've done quite a lot of um, CFD modelling and um, a lot of engineering thought going into improving the performance of the refrigeration plant and reducing the size of the refrigeration plant in, as a net result. Uh, innovative developments to maximise the steam recovery from the coffee grounds and reduce um, natural gas consumption for steam production. Um, a lot of heat recovery. Uh, we put in for the first time um, frankly, a fantastic heat recovery system. I don't know how else to see it. I'm very, personally very proud of it because uh, it worked. And I uh, had a lot of uh, people guessing it might not work, so that was uh, very satisfactory when it all um, came into fruition. Um, we've also done a lot of process design to reduce waste and water consumption, and we've reviewed this entire plant uh, for ergonomics from the beginning to improve the, and enhance the working conditions for the employees and the staff in the factory. Now, part of this is a, due to a public commitment made in 2010. Uh, it's, in, it's in the public domain about the Nescafe plan. This is our CEO on the picture at the top. And uh, in 2010, Nescafe committed uh, on a global initiative to 
improve um, CSV in the coffee supply chain from farmers all the way through to consumers. And part of our factory is the industrial part. It extends into the, the farmers, the, the developing farmers, training them, uh, making sure that they have uh, all the right tools and conditions. But inside the Nescafe plan is a bit about energy use, reuse will be reduced by 20% per tonne by 2020 and water consumption will be reduced by 30% per tonne by 2020. So this is a um, public commitment made uh, already six years ago and uh, as I said this factory in, in Derbyshire replaced another factory um, which was producing basically the same amount of coffee but a very old factory which has of course not been optimised. And uh, we did some comparison between 2014 and 2015 on water and energy savings between the two factories. So we reduced energy consumption by 600,000 gigajoules in a year, more than 1 million tonnes of uh, water consumption and 35,000 tonnes of CO2 equivalent in greenhouse gases. So uh, you, you can compare that with uh, any metrics you have, but personally, I think these are big numbers. Um, just a couple of pictures. So this is what the, the site looked like in the um, summer of 2012. We had some archaeologists. Somehow they thought they would find something. Um, but this used to be an old swamp, so there was effectively nothing. Uh, I didn't stop them from taking weeks to go and dig holes in the ground, but that was what the archaeologists left behind. Um, in October 2013, we, had the, we started construction in January 2013. By October 2013, the buildings were largely in place and we were installing the evaporator uh, into the building. And then in January 2015, we were commissioning this plant. So from January 2012, when the first announcement was made, um, started recruiting the project team, defining the scope, getting the budget, going for planning permission, everything. So January 2013 we started construction and then January 2015 we were commissioning. So it was basically three years. Um, now I have a small time-lapse video which we can watch. This just gives you an idea of the construction From, there's two cameras because we couldn't fit the whole site on one camera. So the black building in the left there is the roasting building and the building in the foreground here is the freeze-dry building. I think that's it. So, 100% um, pure soluble coffee extracted from great quality coffee beans using the latest technology to delight our consumers while making the least impact on the environment. Thank you.